Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. Today's topic, continued from last week, is how much muscle can you expect to grow at any given unit time and all the way through like 10 years of training? Well, here is a detailed discussion. Now, here is a huge, huge caveat before we start. These are my synthesized estimates. They are very estimates. They're very general. The variance is huge, and I could be way far off. So if you'd like to debate me on my estimates in the comments, please do. It boosts the algorithm. But to be honest, I could be totally wrong. And however, maybe I'm not totally wrong, maybe just a little wrong, and there could be some value here. Point zero, what we'll start out with, is the factor list of things that determine how much muscle you gain, or largely determine anyway. Then we're going to talk about how much muscle you can gain per week, per month, in year one of your training, in years two and three combined, in years four, five, and six, and in year seven plus, which is to say really kind of seven to ten. And then an interesting little hook. What if you're no longer natty? And if you don't know what that means, tell your mom to put your coloring books away and turn off the video. If you do know what that means, you're a psycho overlord criminal rebel, and we'll get to that in a sec. All right. Factor list. How do various factors actually uh, imply how much muscle you're going to gain during any one time and your career? Well, here's the thing. Genetics, huge. Uh, actually, uh, dependently and independently sort of determine how much muscle you're going to gain with the following characteristics. The following characteristics are both somewhat independent and dependent on one another, and they determine how much muscle you're going to gain. So first is how much you start with. Okay, if you start pretty jacked, you're going to be really jacked at the end of the whole thing, and, and that's pretty sweet. Also, people who start jacked usually gain more muscle. Uh, like, you know, one of the reasons you start jacked is you just have higher test. So just naturally, and then when you train with higher test naturally, you usually gain more muscle. Uh, another one is how fast you initially gain. Another one is how quickly your gains curve flattens out. For some people, it flattens out pretty fast. For some people, it goes and goes and goes and goes and, of course, flattens out, but less. So they get uh, uh, some total long-term gains that are higher. And uh, also how long you gain for total because some people will at year seven or so have negligible gains after that. And then some people are natural and gaining muscle still 15 years into their career. There's always Jeff Alberts. Feel free to look him up. Um, uh, 3D muscle journey. He's like fucking 100 and still getting more and more jacked. Doesn't make any sense. I think he's legit like 50 years old. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Lifetime natty. Uh, really super inspirational. Some people just keep gaining slow but steady. And some people peter out. You don't really have a choice in the matter, so genetics are a big deal. Now, sex. People do have it. I've heard it feels nice. I've seen it on the videos even occasionally when I'm when I'm not doing this. Uh, JK, so his sex here means sort of a similar thing to gender. Females, for all the numbers I'll list, uh, multiply them by 0.5 or by 0.66, somewhere between the two. 0.666, the devil's multiplication, we don't do that here. But anyway, roughly half to uh, two-thirds. Uh, is what you can expect of male gains um, as a female. And point number three is the difficulty and consistency of your training, which is to say, look, if you're doing four to six weekly sessions that are solid, your technique is good. It doesn't mean perfect, but decent. You do a squat and someone's like, that is a squat exercise. It's not like you do a squat and someone's like, that person walked out a barbell and then stood there for a while and did things with their knees and then went back in. Uh, hard training, you're pushing it, and no periods of like many months off. Like people say, like, yeah, I've been training for five years, and like, oh, cool, the entire time, like, well, it took three years off in the middle of that. Like, well, motherfucker, that's not five years. So if you're doing that stuff, you're checking the boxes, and to the extent that you're not doing that stuff or doing less of it, then you're not getting all the gains that we're going to be able to talk about here. Another one, and these all sort of assume these gains here. Um, sorry, these gains I'm going to talk about in a bit, the actual numbers, assume that you're doing most of this kind of good stuff. Uh, intelligent programming. Okay, do you, do you manage fatigue? If you don't know what a deload is and you've been trained for two years, oh boy, right? Uh, do you know how to detect poor stimulus to fatigue ratios, exercises that aren't really hitting your muscles that well, and just hitting your joints? Uh, and do you know how to replace them with exercises that better suit your needs? Because a lot of people get a lot of growth just finding exercises that work for them. And if you don't know how to do that, you could be missing out on a lot of growth. Obvious one here, another one is diet. Point number five, uh, if you don't gain any weight, it's difficult for you to gain all the muscle tissue you could have. Anyone who starts out at 150 pounds or 130 pounds when they're lifting, they're not getting 180 and jacked by main gaining or gain taining. It's 
physically fucking impossible. You have to add calories somehow because your body's not made of some, you know, substance that doesn't have any matter. You have to add matter. So if you're not gaining weight the entire time, you start at 130, you're going to stay at 130. You're going to be like a Bruce Lee type motherfucker around 30, but you're not going to be 180. And there's a big difference between that. And, you know, if you under eat protein or it's just poor nutrient intake, you're like deficient in a bunch of vitamins and minerals, you're not going to get as, as much gain as you could have. So that impacts the curves. Sleep, stress, recovery, uh, we don't mean professional bodybuilder. All you do is you don't answer the phone the entire day. All you do is train and sleep and rest. Uh, just enough sleep per night to be rather rested. You're not like chronically underslept. Average stress, ideally below. You know, you're not like CEO is calling you and firing you every hour or whatever. And uh, no other sports. So a lot of times people will train during wrestling like I did when I was in high school. They get like good gains, but not ideal gains because wrestling is not great for your gains. It tires you out. It gets you hurt. And that last point is if you have tons of injuries or more than a few, then of course your gains aren't going to be what they would have been had you not been hurt. And lastly is age. Uh, after 40, things get a little tougher. And if you're curious how tough and why and the specific dynamics of that, we have a whole video on aging. Hopefully uh, Scott the Video Guy will throw it in one of those magic YouTube clickers. Click on the aging video. We'll see if he does. And if he doesn't, I'm sure you can YouTube it. I was going to say Google, but Google owns YouTube. Google owns all. You guys remember what happened to me in my Bill Gates video? I got that muscle cramp when I was talking shit. So now, now that Bill Gates is single, who knows what he's capable of? And oh my God, <laughs> fuck, Scotty, hamstring cramp. So whoever's in charge of Google and YouTube, Sergey Brin, is that one of the people? I love you. You're great. Please don't hurt me. All right. Per week, how much muscle can you gain? Fascinating and almost entirely irrelevant. Uh, imaging isn't that good. We can barely tell. We have to do tracer studies, and then they're super complex, difficult to infer. Maybe between a tenth of a pound and half a pound uh, per week. Uh, and average for noobs is like a fifth of a pound of actual muscle uh, per week in year one. Um, but you can gain half a pound to a pound per week in the first eight weeks in some cases. So it's sometimes it's barely detectable and sometimes it's like you watch someone physically change and get stretch marks over the course of eight weeks. You're like, holy shit, what the hell's going on with you, Hulk, right? So you get everything in between. Um, for anyone not just starting out, it's uh, uh, an amount you can barely tell, okay? And it hardly matters. So it's better seen from a month perspective or a year or longer than that. So let's go to a month. Still hard to tell. Imaging isn't that good. Tracer studies are limited in utility. And, you know, maybe we're looking at between a sixth of a pound and two pounds of muscle gain per month. And that's, uh, you know, for noobs, uh, mostly um, is like, you know, one pound per month in year one, which is to say like roughly 10 to 12 pounds, maybe 10 pounds in the first year total, right? It's like a pound of muscle per month. That makes sense. But it's probably like one to three pounds per month in the first six months. And then it levels off a little bit because it does one of these. Um and the last note about per month is also kind of useless to speculate, but outliers are a big deal here. That some people actually put on 10 pounds plus of muscle in their first six months. Legit, they do. No steroids or anything like that. And some people just put on a few pounds and they're kind of woefully disappointed, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. All right. Much more realistic and branching off of our video last week. In year one, the average gain I would estimate is between 5 and 15 pounds of muscle for young, healthy males. And the outliers here uh, include people who don't gain at all, okay? There have been long research studies where some subjects actually gain zero muscle as detected by the best instruments we have. Boy, oh boy, you want to be the researcher, a grad student working on that study, and they come in a year later like, what did I gain, coach? And you're like, you're great. Did we tell you that? They're like, yeah, you told me a bunch. You're like, and that's what matters. They're like, I didn't get any muscle. They're like, you lost two pounds of muscle. It legit happens sometimes. It's like Captain America before he had the... Uh, steroids. Uh, and, uh, you know, he was like probably the guy that was going to lose muscle if you tried training. Uh, some people gain 20 pounds or more per muscle in the first year on rare occasions. It happens. It absolutely happens. Now, 10 pounds of muscle in the first year for decently dedicated and relatively well-fed training is realistic for perhaps like half of all uh, young, healthy males, which is pretty sweet. And that's maybe five to seven pounds for half of all young, healthy females. So something to write home about for sure, but lots of variation there. So be mindful that you don't take these as what you should ex expect to gain yourself or expect your clients to gain. Big normal curve, right? Years two and three. So we got year one, that's like roughly 10 pounds for a uh, young, healthy male. 
Years two and three, probably about five pounds per year in both of those years. Some people are on the zero to two and a half pounds per year of that. Some people are still doing 10 pounds of muscle every single fucking year. So you'll have people legit who gain like 10-ish pounds of muscle in the first year, like 10 their second and like 10 their third. It happens. It absolutely happens. How good someone does on the muscle gain factor up to year three is determined heavily by the usual suspects, genetics, et cetera, gender, blah, blah, or uh, sorry, sex. Um, another one is, are you trying to gain weight? Like if you want to gain 30 pounds of muscle in your first three years of training, you had better be eating because where the fuck do you think that physical tissue is going to come from? Nowhere. You can't gain tain or main gain your way into that bullshit. It straight up doesn't happen. So unless you start out really fat, like, and even then, eating at maintenance or a slight surplus will just boost your gains big time. Uh, another one is, did you successfully sort of earn your rank of intermediate by actually doing smart shit? Are you now doing deloads? Are you doing good technique? Is your training intensity high? Because if you have dog shit noob approach to training in year one and you never get any better at training, like you're like, oh, my biceps, I do biceps like this. And someone's like, do you feel your biceps better with the barbell or the cable? You're like, what is bicep feel? Oh, God. Well, I don't know if you really know anything. You're like, how hard are you training? They're like, I do sets of 10. And are like, how close to failure? They're like, I don't fail. I succeed. You're like, are you a fucking alien or a robot or what? Some people put almost no thought into their training. They're just like automatons. And they won't make the obvious adjustments you should be. So if you are, you're probably on that higher end. If you're not making the obvious adjustments, someone could pretty quickly watch you train at the gym for a week and be like, I can tell you why you're not making really good gains and we can fix a lot of these issues really, really quick. All right. Years four, five, and six per year during these years, many people will get roughly one to five pounds of muscle gain per year, okay? Now, some people will gain somewhere between no muscle and a pound per year. Tough, legit, it happens. If it happened to you, comment below. That's rough. I don't know how many people want to admit that sort of thing. For some folks, they're gaining every year, year four, year five, year six, five pounds or more muscle on average. That also happens, okay? Somebody's got to be an IFB pro around here, right? It's sure as hell ain't us. Uh, so there's a huge, huge, huge variation here. Now, at this point, how much muscle you gain versus your genetic potential starts to really be affected by your training quality the degree of individualization you have made to your training. Like is bent rows really your exercise for building a big back or is machine rows just hitting you 50 times better in every respect? Um, nutrition, all these things start to matter a lot more and even down to individualized exercise selection, down to exercise technique, five to six days of training is now obviously superior to three to four. So if you're like, well, oh, I haven't been gaining a ton of weight, I mean, I'm in year four and someone's like, well, how often do you train per week? And I'm like, like two to three times a week. Like, no fucking shit. You got to train four or five or six times a week and then you'll gain much more muscle because now you're, you know, you're not gaining that much per session that you need to add sessions to keep the gain rate up. And it's, you know, you're into it culturally. You're not going to just like burn out if you had a session. If you like it after three years, you're probably going to be just fine for year four. And now for many people, specialization becomes a clear advantage. So, you know, generally you just, work out all your muscles or whichever ones you want to grow for the first like three years, but year four, five, and six is when it's maybe like, oh, okay, like I should do three or four months of really, really hammering my chest and triceps and then uh, being easy on my back and biceps and then another three months the other way, another, you know, three months for the legs and sort of rotate. That starts to have really clear benefits or uh, is sort of uh, leaving the other training approaches a little bit behind just, just exiting that envelope because it really does matter. You can make more of an impact with specialization where before your whole total body systemic fatigue was, uh, your cap was so high that it didn't matter. You can train everything and be just fine. So just to tally up so far, after year six of training, some total of six years of training from year zero, zero to year six, on the ouch side of that, not so great things happened, maybe because of genetics, maybe some other factors, you might be looking at 10 to 15 pounds total muscle so far, on average for the ouch side. There's people on the ouch side that are getting nothing, and there's people on the ouch side that are getting much better than that. On the average side of gains, you may be looking at 20 to 30 total pounds of muscle for the average young healthy male. Oh, that's pretty sweet. On the Yahoo side of like, holy shit, I'm God's gift to lifting weights, you may be looking at 30 to 40 pounds total muscle up through year six. Big deal, and you might be headed somewhere if that's the case, particularly like to Gainesville. Ha, ah, what's up, Florida? Been to Gainesville a few times. It's a fine town. Now, what about year seven plus? 
For many people, year seven, eight, nine, ten, etc., you're looking at one to two pounds of muscle per year for most people. And if you ever dive into the natty forums and get right real depressed, this will really feed the fires of depression because it's probably true. Right? Some folks, it'll be worse. They'll essentially be all but plateaued, and that happens. For some people, they'll put on, or many people, maybe even most, will put on like a pound and a half of muscle per year through year 10, you know, year seven to 10, a pound and a half. And then some people will still be able to crank out three to five pounds of muscle per year here for like three to five years. Right, so all those seven, eight, nine, ten. Whoa. Is Mike trying to kill me? Is that Bill Gates again? Uh, seriously, I really need to stop talking that shit. So some folks can actually put on three to five pounds of muscle on average every year for like year seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe even eleven. Right? That really does happen. Now, at ten years after beginning diligent diet and good, uh, or sorry, diligent training and good eating, 10 years total of that, on the outside of like, you know, some combination of genetics, lifestyle, et cetera, blah, 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 you didn't do all that great, you may be looking at something like 12 to 17 pounds of total muscle so far, right? something like 15 pounds of muscle, which is awesome. 15 pounds of muscle is a lot of muscle, but after 10 years, it could seem underwhelming. Especially if you do the reverse math and go like, fuck, that's a pound and a half a year. That kind of blows. And, and you know, yeah, it kind of does, right? Now, on average, young, healthy males will be able to gain something like, I think, 25 to 35 pounds of total muscle per year. So like 30, sorry, per year, good God, over the course of 10 years. So, hey, that's pretty sweet. 30 pounds is a lot. And on the Yahoo side of like, hey, you really did well genetically and other factors, you may be going for 40 to 55 pounds of muscle total over the first 10 years of your training. And probably that's close to within as far as you'll get because after 10 years, the gains are really, really slow in most cases. I don't. For context, let's use an example. We're going to develop the perfect male. He is going to be exactly five foot nine, which is the perfect male height. I'm not five nine, by the way. I'm five, six and a half. Oof, why didn't you make me taller? Microphone, and then God above that. On the outside, our male is 130 pounds, five foot nine, starts training at 18 ish years of age. We're looking at 145 pounds, and because all the gains of 15 pounds there were muscle, 145 pounds lean, because you probably started average, you know, Harry Potter physique. 145 lean. It's a good look. It's a good look. A uh, well into the club fuckboy look, right? Um, so even if you don't have like amazing genetics, you can still fucking look good. Because remember like regular people, if you're 145 and lean and you take a shirt off at the beach, pool, uh, dance club, they probably kick you out at the dance club for that sort of thing. Unless you are in the countries of Europe and then it's totally cool, especially Hungary. Just kidding, Europeans. Stay calm. That was my awful impression of the entire continent. So 145 pounds lean, pretty neat starting at 130, training for 10 years. Another person on the average side, out of a stereotype here, may start at 130, 5'9", same idea. 10 years later, they're 160, and they're stage lean or close if they choose to push that. Now, obviously, they could be 170, and as lean as they started, they add some muscle and some fat. Same body fat percentage means you add some fat as well. So 160 stage lean, I mean, yeah, well, that's to almost every normal person, that's a jack dude. Okay, that's when you pull off your shirt at the grocery store, they call the police. And not because you're robbing them, but because they're like, you could fight crime. We're going to call the police to come pick you up so you can beat up bad guys with them. It's clearly with biceps like that. You're overqualified. On the Yahoo side of things, you really good genetics. You did super well and you really got dedicated and did all the right stuff. You start at 130 at five foot nine at roughly 18 years old. You're a young, healthy male. And you may end up at like 180 pounds, stage lean. And interestingly enough, this is where a lot of natty pros land, especially top natty professional bodybuilders, 5'9", 180, stage lean. Yeah, that's a really good natty pro. Now, some natty pros are bigger than that, uh, but not so commonly. And that's why it was sort of our example kind of adds up to where elite genetics is elite genetics. Right. Now, all this talk about natty pros, you may be asking yourself the obvious question, what if I were to hypothetically at year 10 no longer be natty? And what if I choose to go to the dark side? A decent impression of the emperor? I don't know. I give myself a B plus. We'll go down that road in the next video next week. Oh, I got you guys. You thought I was going to talk about that shit today, but we would run out of time 
and uh, people just don't watch videos past a certain length. You guys know that. See you next week, and we'll talk about unnatty gains. Uh, Darth Vader. See you next time.